stage, Robert Ross, ILWU Local 23. seconds ago that I'm going to be giving some remarks today. <laughs> well, my name's Robert Ross. I'm from uh, ILW Local 23. I am here in an unofficial capacity to celebrate Juneteenth, um, but I am a, a member in good standing, and I know the importance of a union, and when a union is united, they cannot be separated, and that's a fact. Thank you. But I don't have... I don't have a vast depth of history of Juneteenth. Because as you see, I actually never celebrated Juneteenth, and I didn't even know much about Juneteenth. I heard about it, but I didn't know about it. So I spent the last two weeks diving into the history of Juneteenth and how it connects to the fabric of my own family. And when I look back over my history, the 159 years that this has been celebrated, I ended on the last known relative that I can trace back in my history before it goes blank. It was Frank Ross, born in 1863, prior to the signing of the Emancipation Proclamation which meant he wasn't born with all of his rights and considered property while he sat in the arms of one of my ancestors that I have yet to identify. And when I think about the struggle that my great-great-great-great-grandfather went through, it brings me to tears seeing that the lineage that came after the emancipation the folks that came after General Gordon Granger read the Emancipation. And when he, I thought he rode in, but he sailed in. And some of the first people to know were dock workers that he told. And they were working on the job when they found out that they was free and no longer considered property. That they get to negotiate wages with the boss, the master, right? And I imagine the halation they felt when they heard the word that they wasn't property. I bet you a lot of them said, Hallelujah! I know they screamed at the top of their lungs that their freedom was guaranteed and it was being enforced. It was cause for pause. It was cause to pause for a minute and take a breath and celebrate that their freedom was guaranteed and being enforced. There was a new fight, and that was against the economic oppression that they had to face. And we've been fighting that for 159 years. We have lots of work to do. And the way we get there is with the union fighting for our rights and our wages. We've only gotten to $7 an hour in the history of the United States of America. That's what our time is worth, right? And I think it's time that we keep pressing these guys to give us a livable wage. Something that we can survive off of, right? Right? I could get long-winded, so I appreciate everybody coming out here, Local 19, Local 52, Gabriel, Thank you for the energy, everybody. Thank you for coming out. Let's keep this energy, though. Let's not make this another cause for pause, okay? Because I'm for reparations across the nation. So let's keep this energy, y'all. And tomorrow, let's unpause. And let's get the money that we deserve. Thank you, Jesus.